Hey gang, so this is going to be the first in a series of videos to introduce probability, namely some basic properties and notation and term terminology associated with probability. And you likely already have an intuitive sense of probability. It's the chance of something occurring, right? how likely an event is to occur. A note about that is expectation is usually considered from a long-term perspective and not generally a short-term perspective. And that's something we'll kind of discuss over time as well. Let's dive into some terminology. The terms outcome or event are sometimes used interchangeably. They are slightly different from each other, but it's basically the outcome of some operation. So perhaps to keep it simple here, flipping a coin, we have heads and tails, right? So if you're flipping a coin once, achieving a tails could be a particular event or Flipping a head could be a particular event. The sample space would be all of the possible outcomes in a particular scenario. In the coin flip example, all the outcomes would be heads, then tails. There's only two possible outcomes there on Earth. Let's look at some notation. When referring to an event or an outcome, we often give them shorthand names. So if I was referring to the event of flipping a head, I might be inclined to call that H or T for tails. If you want to keep it general, you might just say E for event. Sometimes F and G are common there. You can use just about any letter you want. Those are some of the common ones. And if we wanted to refer to, say, the probability of a particular event, say, the probability of flipping a heads, in one coin flip, that's a lot to write every single time, right? But we can shorthand that by instead the event H, it's representing heads, and we want the probability of H. So probability parentheses inside the parentheses is the event. That's a common way to do it. Another common way is instead of P, P with an R, and sometimes little curly brackets are used. Just a couple various ways that probability is commonly denoted in shorthand. Let's look at a couple properties of probability. Well, can you imagine what the smallest probability is? Probably zero. And the biggest would be one. So I'm going to write that the probability of any event, here I've written that the probability could equal zero or is greater than zero but I'd also have to say that it is less than or equal to one. So there's one property. Furthermore, let's consider what all the probabilities would add up to in a particular scenario. For instance, if you took the sum of the probabilities of all the events in a particular scenario, for instance, 
what's the probability of heads plus the probability of tails? That would have to equal a 1. So all the probabilities must sum to 1. Let's look at an example to put this terminology into context. I've got a standard six-sided die imaged here, and let's suppose that you roll that die once. What is the sample space? Well, the sample space is all possible outcomes. And while well, we know that you could roll a 1, you could roll a 2, or a 3, 4, 5, or 6. Those are all the possible outcomes. That is a set. We often denote a set with these whoop curly braces. And if you want, you could even give this a name. Um, sometimes, often people use S for sample space. I suppose you could use any letter you want. Um, I could call this D for die. Cool. Here I'm asking, let's find these probabilities. What is the probability of rolling a 2? Well, 2 is only one of the possible outcomes out of the six, right? And each one of these outcomes is equally likely to occur, right? Probability of rolling a two, we could also say that's the same as the probability is rolling a five and a six and a seven. So straightforward there, but we'll touch on that in just a second. What about the probability of rolling an odd value? Well, out of the six outcomes possible, there are three that are odd. So three sixths or one half, if you prefer. A couple things to note here is that the way in which these probabilities were determined are based off of theoretical or sometimes called classical probabilities because it's based on long-term expectation, right? We would expect half of all rolls to result in an odd number. Or we expect every one in six rolls to be a two. So that's based on that long-term expectation. Maybe that deserves an underline there. Theoretical or classical probabilities. Let's contrast this example with a frequency interpretation of probability, where relative frequency can be used to approximate the a probability of an event. Let's look at an example. Let's suppose there are, you got some time on your hands and you're going to do a hundred coin flips. A hundred coin flips of a regular fair coin. Okay, and let's suppose in those 100 coin flips that oh, 065 of them resulted in heads and the remaining 35 resulted in tails. Cool. Now based on this, what might you 
guess if you didn't know that this was a fair coin, you might guess that the probability of heads and tails is not 0.5 and 0.5. You might guess that the probability of heads is, oh gee, 65 heads occurred out of the 100. And gee, the probability of tails, well, that occurred 35 times out of the 100 trials. So you might guess that the probabilities here are 0.65 and 0.35, right? And that's based off of observation or experimentation. And this is just relative frequency, right? How often an event occurred out of the total sample size, essentially. Now to contrast with this previous example, this is considered empirical probabilities. So this is called the empirical approach to estimating probabilities. And this is where the information that was used to estimate these probabilities was gathered from either observation or experimentation. Let's do another quick example to demonstrate sample space. This time, let's consider the sample space for the following operation. It's a coin flip again, but this time it's flipping the coin twice, so not just once. So there's more than meets the eye here because you might be tempted, oh, well, isn't it heads, tails again? Not quite, because that's the sample space for a single coin flip. But with two coin flips, the outcomes are the list that occurs after the two flips. I'll call this S for sample space. And for instance, we could have two heads, right? Two heads in a row. So that's one of the outcomes in the sample space. We could have two tails. Yes, yes. There's two more here. We could have heads, then tails, or tails, then heads. So there's a couple things going on here. The way in which I've written this, HT and TH refer to different outcomes. Right, this is saying heads first, tails second, and over here, this is the flip. <laughs> tails first, heads second. So that's a shorthand that we can often do that indicates order in some way. However, that doesn't really apply to the HH or the TT, because there's only one way to get two heads in a row. There's only one way to get two tails in a row. But as you can see here, there are two ways to get one heads and one tails. 
just depends on which one goes first. So that's a combination that we'll discuss. Let's talk about some probabilities while we're here. Can we determine the following probabilities? Let's find the chance of getting two heads in a row. And we'll do the probability of two tails in a row. And we'll do the probability of O tails then heads. And lastly, not leastly, let's do probability of one heads with one tails. We'll kind of describe these as we chug along here. Because each of the elements that went into the sample space, the individual heads and tails all have the same chance of occurring, one half that is, all of these four outcomes in the sample space are equally likely to occur. Therefore, probability of HH is one out of four. Classical. Probability of tails then heads would be, again, one out of the four. Now here comes the fun part. Here, I am not specifying which one is going first, heads or tails. I'm just saying, hey, heads with the tails. And since there are two ways that that can happen out of the four, that is a probability of one half. Cool. That's going to conclude this video here. Some basics and introductory terminology for probability. In the next video, we'll do some calculations. See you there.